Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for, um, you know, carving a plan for each of us that we can um, surely go and be blessed by you. Be with each of us as we um, start this day, this new bright day. Give us the strength and energy and, and what we need for this day. Be with our family members that are not here with us. Um, bless them also. Keep them safe and protect them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I am going to change, because I'm going <coughs> to, well, before I change, um, <coughs> there is um, some data that I'm going to show, I'm going to present some data that shows that, that shows that, um, that there are certain times in the year that people are the sickest or actually die the most. There's actually a time. And it's related to, and I'm going to show you here. Um, it's related to let's see if I can find, show it to you. <coughs> Okay, holiday, the holidays, look what happens during the holidays, look at the food we eat on the holidays, you know, par Parmesan breadsticks, man, they taste great, but look at this, they have 190 to 230 calories and 9.4 grams of fat, <laughs> yeah, mini quiches, they look tasty, but each of them have 90 calories and 7 grams of fat per, per, per quiche. So they're mini, okay? Pigs in a blanket. Look at this. This is 80 calories and 5 grams of fat each. The holiday candy. <coughs> Halloween. Four bite-sized bar is 320 calories, 20 ca candy corns, 100 calories, 25 jelly beans, 140 calories. Mashed potatoes, butter, and milk. <laughs> we have a better alternative to this one, but just like this, it's about 200 calories in half a cup. So you <laughs> nobody eats half a cup of these tasty mashed potatoes. Um, there's a holiday advice. Here's, here's a recommendation that people do for holiday. If you're going to prepare your food, it says use sour cream and milk in place of the cream or half and half. Add a roasted garlic. Grate your favorite cheese into the potatoes. <coughs> it says I have used great, um, I have used freshly great Parmesan, sharp cheddar, and Monterey Jack. These are people in, um, in a website, they're posting, you know, what they, their recommendations for these tasty foods. Chop some chives, blend into potatoes, then sprinkle a few chopped chives on top of to make a pretty cream potato presentation. Crisp, fry bacon, chop, shoot, and why not? <laughs> so, we, I think people go overboard. Look at a, an, an apple, it's a 60 to 100 calories. But when you add caramel, it jumps to 540 calories. My goodness. And then an apple pie. Delicious. 60 to 100 calories. What do you think this jumped to? 400 calories and 20 grams of fat. I think your brain goes dull at that moment. You just can't. And you add a scoop of ice cream, and it's 530 calories. <laughs> what about warm apple cider? You know, we have these for holidays too. It's 200 calories for 16 ounces. <coughs> now, it started with, with 60. What about pumpkin spice latte? <laughs> 20 
20 grams of fat. Do you believe it? 20 grams of fat. Yes, it's incredible. Stuffing. 358 calories, 18 grams of fat per cup. I mean, by the time you kind of realize you ate all that food, your, your brain is like, you know, like, because all these fat, what it causes is that it causes, um, it deprives the brain from oxygen for at least two hours. At least, yeah, all the fat. <laughs> now look at these researchers examined that 53 million, 50, researchers examined 53 million death certificates between 1973 and 2001. Look what they found. When do you suppose people die from heart attacks? During the holidays. During the holidays. The holidays as risk factor for death and circulation. This is a study by David um, Phillips. Now, um, look at this. American dying in all settings by day of death. Look, when is the highest day that people die the most? Yeah, Christmas. Between Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And, and New Year's, you see that it's, um, so it, it, they're likely to, to, to die in those two weeks of Christmas. Higher probability of dying. Now, patients dead on arrival at the hospital. They arrived to the hospital and they were dead at the time they arrived. When do you think is the highest? Christmas Day. That's incredible. Um, no, this is not a funny matter, actually. Thank you for pointing it out. It's not a funny matter. But it's, 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 the, it's, it's the reality where we're living. Patients dying in an emergency room. Christmas Day, too. Hopefully the doctors and nurses don't take holidays those days. Look, <coughs> patients dead on arrival at hospital or dying in emergency room. You could see it by, by, um, by day. The highest is Christmas, then New Year's, then Thanksgiving, 4th of July. And basically the holidays are kind of a dangerous thing. You, could, you, could, you have a higher probability of dying during holidays. Perhaps because of the holiday season is unusually stressful or because distracted holiday party goers tend to delay urgently needed medical treatment. Heavy alcohol consumption may also contribute to death around New Year's Day. Now, <clears throat> we looked at this and we determined from this data that holidays are dangerous for our health. It's a health hazard. Now, the problem with holidays is that you cannot escape them. There's no escaping holidays. You know, you get invited to <coughs> a holiday and you're expected to participate. And if you're not participating, you either die because of participating on it or you die because of not participating on it. Because you're going to get roasted by your family members and friends if you don't participate. So it's both ways, right? It's just it's challenging. It's, it's hazard, hazardous to have so many holidays in our calendar because, I mean, i um, show you these. We have um, many holidays here in the United States in different countries. In, you know, they have even more holidays. So <clears throat> what do you do when you have learned about the way God designed you and the God's the, the loss of God for your the loss of God um, for your body and versus what men want you to do? What do you do? Let's say you go to a holiday and there's food that you cannot eat. What do you do now? If you don't eat, you, they kill you. 
through the, through, you know, the gossips and things. You just look at this. They're trying to become better than us. You look at you. They're not participating. What a, you know, what do you do? Or typically, at what time do we celebrate the food in the holidays? At night. At night when our body has no capability of digesting any, any of these heavy food. What do we do? We're, we're going to get, you know, get it both ways. What, how do you ad- approach this problem? I want, I want suggestions. What do you do in your case? Yes. <laughs> okay, so you started a couple years in advance to eat right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> You're already planning for this year. Okay, so you're suggesting to eat earlier. That's a good idea. And, and incorporate healthier options, yes. I mean, that's a good point. That's a good way of approaching it, I think. <laughs> so you you just um you just told you t- you sent a memo to your friends that no more holidays for me only weddings and okay that's good yeah yeah Okay. So you could have foods that are better for you. Yeah, that's that's good. <coughs> ah, there you go. You could provide yourself. You could you could provide something healthier, right? You could make it yourself and actually s- take it to the to the activity so you have a healthier option. Now, what what happens when it's like late at night, like at 9 p.m. and they're eating this meal? What do, what do you how do you how do you escape from that? <laughs> I'm done for the day. Yes. Okay. Sit at the seat. Yeah, with a glass of water. It's it's actually a challenge. I mean, it. I'm glad that you guys have thought about it because it's it's a challenge. You have friends. You have a social life that, you know, at one point or another, it's gonna get people are gonna get shocked by your, your decisions. Yes. <coughs> okay, there you go. A vegetable juice called green champagne. And kefir. <laughs> Had to make it bubbly, yeah. There you go. Okay, you're going to do something else? Okay, good. <coughs> yeah, um, I faced this situation once with my family after we left this place um, where, you know, what do we do? I mean, Saturday nights, we just went out to eat or do something, you know? It was, it, that's, that's tradition, you know? So <coughs> we were faced with what do we do? So, you know, we go out and we didn't eat. We just sat at the table. And it didn't go well, you know, for us. It just, people's like, you know, what are you doing? So eventually they stopped inviting us for a period of time. It's just like, yeah, you know, if you're not going to eat, we're not going to invite you because it makes us feel uncomfortable, I guess. So it was, it was hard, but we just did something else at that time. But then, you know, it came back around and people started to accommodate us, you know, like, oh, okay, we'll accommodate you and, and figure something out, you know, and, and we're okay with it. But it was a period of time that it was kind of, you know, our social life went a little bit sour because of, of that stand. And, um, you know, what has happened is that people see you now and they, they're curious, you know. They're curious to say, hey, you know, why, why are you doing this? And it's a good time to kind of show them, hey, you know what? Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe they change, maybe they know, but at least they, they have knowledge before they didn't have. So you were going to say something, yes. Okay, uh, in Colorado, there's this <laughs> level, Mexican style restaurant, 
So that's how they invite you to, to eat Entonces when you're in Chicago. Pues se prepare, eh, papa al horno. So you prepare potatoes. So you get, tomate, so you had a, a cucumber tomato salad, salad and, and yeah, an and avocado. Tomato, a cucumber, a sprouts, and a avocado. Sprouts and avocado, okay. And a, and a, a potato. And, and potato. then I make, a, I make some food. So and I bring that to the plate. So you, so brought, have, you brought your plate and everybody ate and liked it, I bet. That's great. So that's good. Yes. I have never said it before, but. So when they invite us to the wedding, they, they ask me if you're a vegan, vegetarian, or, or what. So we want to see how many, how many of the different ones are there. They come and bring the plate. And everybody's different. So the one day they asked me, and I told them, and they were able to accommodate me. Yes. Yeah, it's good. That's good. So you could actually prepare ahead of time, and, and things are preparation. Let's look at a, a, at a Bible. Uh, in, Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, there's a story about this. And, um, and I want to see if we can you know, get something out of the story. It's in Daniel chapter 6. By the way, this is our last um, a study on Daniel. Um, but, you know, after this chapter 7 and above, they're actually um, related to prophecy. Things that are going to happen in the future or had happened from there onto the future and there's a lot of history in it you know for example we talked about this image that the king had and in the other chapters of Daniel it actually expand on these kingdoms how how for example the the Greeks um, conquer the Persians and it goes into a lot more detail how Rome um, grew and all these things, all these details are more expanded in the next um, prophecies. And also, there's also future prophecies there that have been, that are going to be fulfilled or have, and others that have been fulfilled already, which is very good to, to look into that in history. If somebody is interested on that, you know, just <laughs> let us know. We have probably material that we can share on those prophecies if you want to continue reading the book of Daniel. Now, Daniel 6, 1, it says, it seemed, good, it seemed like a good idea to Darius to appoint over the kingdom 120 satraps who would be in charge of the entire kingdom. So this is Darius the Mede, and he's, he's, um, he's, 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 um, he's dividing his kingdom under 120 um, governors, you would say, or over them will be three supervisors. So under, uh, on, uh, above the 120, there were three supervisors, one whom was Daniel. These satraps were accountable to them so that the king's interest might not incur in damage. So they would take care of all the king's um, affairs. Now, this Daniel was distinguishing himself above the other supervisors and the satraps. For he had an extraordinary spirit. In fact, the king intended to appoint him over the entire kingdom. That's amazing. You see this man? We have seen since he was a young man, he had given his heart to God. And he says, you know what? I'm going to follow what you tell me. How I was designed, I'm going to follow it. And God gr gave him grace. And every time there's a problem, he's lifted a little bit higher and a little bit higher. Now he's to a point because of the spirit that is in him that the king says, you know what, this man is great. I'm going to put it above all my kingdom. I mean, he was just captured by these guys. 
And he is now appointed to, a, to, to be the highest in the kingdom. Look at this, verse 4. Consequently, the supervisors and the satraps were trying to find some pretext against Daniel in connection with, with administrative matters. But they were unable to find any such damaging evidence because he was trustworthy and guilty of no negligence or corruption. How sad that we cannot say the same thing in our environments, you know, in our governments, in our companies, and where we, it just, it's really hard to find people like this. So these supervisors and sat, satraps came by collusion, hey, that's a, a common word nowadays, came by collusion to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. To all the supervisors of the kingdom, the prefects, the satraps, the counselors, and governors, it seems like a good idea for a royal edict to be issued and an inter interdict to be enforced. For the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human other than you, O king, should be thrown into the den of lions. Now let the king issue a written interdict so that it cannot be altered according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be changed. So the king Darius issued the written interdict. So, <coughs> here we see something. And I'm <coughs> going to write it in the wall. In the so here's the king. And he appointed three counselors or satraps, and over them he appointed Daniel. And they were appointed over the whole kingdom. So <clears throat> these people, were they happy about it? No, they weren't happy. They were jealous about the position that it has been given to Daniel. You see? But jealousy was not part of Daniel's... Um, Core, he's, he's, the spirit of God was in him. Now, <clears throat> typically, people are extremely ambitious. And when ambition is not bad, but these people that are ambitious, they want to get to where they want to get no matter what they have to take down. This is the mentality. And these people are not to be trusted. The king knew that I cannot trust these men with a higher position because they're gunning for me. They're gunning for, for power. And if you look at history, it happened a lot. You know, a king got slept in his laurels and they would kill him and take over. That just happened over and over. That's just the mentality that people had. Now, the king didn't see that spirit in Daniel, so he was able to trust him with all these responsibilities. God was with him. Now, they decided to fill the mind of the king and said, King, I want you to do something. For 30 days, for 30 days, anyone that worship anybody than you should be thrown in the dens of lion. For 30 days. So now, here we are. The king falls into the trap. And they just created a 30-day holiday. Now, this is a big holiday. And if you don't participate in this holiday, death, because you're not going to survive the lion's den. So it's the same decision we have to make, right? We go to holidays, and we have to say, do we participate on these holidays? We die by participating, a slow death or a, a quick death, or we die by not participating because we're going to get crucified by our families and friends. What do we do? It becomes God's design laws versus Man's decree. 
What do you do? You know, when here we are comfortable here, we say, well, we just go with God's design law, how he designed me to, to do. Let's see what Daniel did. <coughs> Verse 10 says, When Daniel realized that a written decree had been issued, he entered into his home. Where the, win where the windows in his upper room open towards Jerusalem. Three times daily he was kneeling and offering prayers and thanks to his God, just as he had been accustomed to do previously. Now Daniel took a stand. He said, you know what? I, I, I really, there's, a, there's a, point, a time and a place where I would obey the king over anything, but not against God. And he was committed. He had given his life to him already, so he was committed. And you know what? He did this. He went home. Opened the windows. He kneel and pray. He pray. And his prayer started with what? Thanksgiving. You know, home is where your heart is. And, um, and sometimes we, we have to, for a period of time, we have to go to places where people, you know, have the same ideas that we have, that are going on the same direction. Because it's hard where you're going to a place and everybody's going to a different direction. It's tough. Sometimes you have to, you know what, for a period of time, until I get close to this path that I'm going to start walking, I need to go to a place and I meet with people that are on my same wavelength. They, they want, desire what God desires for me. You see? God says, my ways are not your ways. Well, why don't you meet with people that are on, going on the ways that God wants designed for you? You have to do some, some, some decisions sometimes for a period of time. I'm not saying to avoid family or friends that you love. I'm just saying you have to sometimes meet up with people that are like-minded until you get on your path. And he went home. He did that. And then <coughs> opened the windows, you know. When you have to make a decision, fresh air is the best thing to, to, to do. Then prayed, and he prayed with thanksgiving. You know, that's, that's amazing. You, you know that if you take a stand for God, he was going to die. And um, he thanked God for, for always protecting him and always knowing the solution for it. I, I, I encourage you to finish the story. It's an amazing story. Because he was thrown in the land and the lion was dead. And it was very interesting because the king, king realized that he had um, made a mistake. That he had fell into the trap. And he couldn't sleep that night when he put Daniel in the lion's den. But the story, it's an amazing story. And I, and I encourage you to continue reading that, that chapter. So let's have a prayer. Let's pray. And, um, and let's consider these things. Thank you.